because Immortals will be playing TSM, CLG will be playing Cloud9, they'll be playing the top two teams. So, if you look at that, if things go as expected with quotes around it, and not against uh, all logic, then one of these teams will be tied for fifth at the end of the day, but the other, since TL and Envy will be playing each other, the two bottom teams, one of them will be only one match away. The loser will only be one match away from being in ninth place and in a relegation spot. This is a make or break match for your postseason. And that really does perfectly illustrate how close everything is when a single match puts you on either the cusp of a playoff tie or the edge of the cliff that is relegation. So both these teams want to keep themselves away from that drop. The bands are done. It's Camille Rise and Thresh banned away by Echo Fox. Dig going to take Malzahar, LeBlanc, and Varus off the table. And the Lulu that we've seen a lot more priority on recently is going to be the first pick for Echo Fox. That's going to be snatched up very quickly as well. And I assume the Rengar goes over to Chaser. He loves that champion. He will actually gank top lane through the brush constantly. If they match with the Karma here, it just shows that they're trying to take away. Uh, and just match rolls and not show anything because there's already a support for Echo Fox. And we'll see here. <laughs> Ooh, that would be interesting. Hey, that's not Medios. Yeah. I mean, Dignitas ended up uh, winning yesterday. Echo Fox ended up losing to P1 and a Zac from Medios. So Chaser giving a little BM there. <laughs> He will go ahead, pick up that Rengar along with the Karma. Karma, of course, able to keep Rengar sped up and shielded and can make him that much more of a deadly assassination threat than he already is. But when you have to run him into a oh. Lulu, things are hard. Echo Fox for their second rotation here, picking up the Graves and the Ash. But this is something that I was thinking about uh, when we first introduced the 10 ban system that you only have 30 seconds per pick. Echo Fox are going boom, boom. They're actually locking them in so fast. They're not giving you as much time to think about your bans or your picks. And they're kind of using your time to deliberate that. And it seems like they're just going very quickly trying to put pressure on the enemy team. It's an interesting mind game to take a look at. It's one of the things that can easily go unnoticed throughout the picking and banning phase is just the kinds of things you can do like that. The little subtleties that may or may not be able to give you an edge against your opponents. Ezreal the final pick of the first phase for Team Dignitas. So AD carry and support and jungler versus AD carry support and jungler means we are going to see all solo lane focused bands in this second part of the banning phase. Rumble, the first one removed by Team Dignitas. Yeah, it'll be interesting because there's a counter pick here for Keen in the mid lane, the counter pick King from back in the day, the Urgot, the Jarvan come to mind, uh, and even mid lane Rumble at one point, but Rumble will be banned away against the Looper. And the Cassiope will be banned away against Keen. So it looks like there will be some top lane and some mid lane bans here from both of them, like you said. The roles that have not been picked yet. But they'll start pinching them down. Focusing on the AP champions here at the start. There's a lot of AD being played these days. And right now, the teams currently have no real AP on their side. The Karma and the Lulu, I don't really think those count since they're going to be on support. But Singed also taken away now by Dignitas, respecting the pocket pick for Looper. Yeah, uh, I think you take that off the table. You can't really get rid of all the pocket picks for Looper. The Swain is still up there. Uh, also for Frog and Twisted Fate, which nobody else really plays right now. Twisted and Fate and Nivia, both somewhat commonly banned against Froggen, but not taken away this game. Syndra will be the final ban mm. from Echo Fox, not wanting to give that one to Keen. So he actually just banned away both of the champions that Keen played yesterday, getting a solo kill with Cassiopeia against Huki, and then also the Syndra that he played in the next game. So they took away both the champions that they had seen Keen pop off on. It's a viable strategy, considering yesterday's performance was very different for these two teams, one going 2-0, and zero, one going 0-2. Zero and two. Maybe stopping what was working for them most recently is exactly what they need to do to find a win here. Nautilus will be the first pickup of this second part of the picking phase for the side of Team Dignitas. I'm a little sad you didn't go with the red versus blue quote. It's a legitimate strategy. I <laughs> tried to <laughs> Captain Flowers yourself. It's the first game of the day, Zyrene. We can't have <laughs> a full meme just yet. That's true. The Shen, though, I actually like this for Looper. He didn't perform too well on it uh, the other day, but it is a champion that can assist. And this is really interesting because now they set up Froggen to carry uh, with double shielding. This is a composition that Echo Fox were kind of running the other day where they had a Katarina mid. And so they had something that could dive in and that could deliver the Shen, but also the Shen would protect alongside the Lulu. So this Ari here will serve a lot of the same job. Yeah, you see something like a Rengar on the enemy team up against something with very low mobility, no natural escapes like an Ash. You're thinking, okay, Rengar's got a value target to jump on, but with Lulu and Shen keeping them safe, it's a lot harder to complete that job and make that happen as Dignitas trolling around with their last pick hover for the time being. Highly doubt we're really going to be seeing yeah, Echo her got today, but Echo ends up being what they lock in instead there for the mid lane. 
Uh, Echo is quite good into this matchup. You'll be able to follow her through the uh, first Spirit Rush. And then also the fact that you get to take Teleport, you get to 1-3-1 one, one later on in the game. And this is a 1-3-1 composition here from Team Dignitas. They'll be able to start getting the split push online. Uh, and then Chaser can go between the lanes. The Karma is there for the Mantra E to speed everybody away. So if Keen gets fed, they start using the double teleports. And if he doesn't get fed, they start actually grouping up using him as wave clear. And Chaser will go between top lane and the four unit, uh, four people that they have grouped up. Echo Fox, on the other hand, a lot of engage here. The Ash Arrow, Froggen can dive in, the Shen. And then Acadian is a lot of this damage. I think some of the biggest successes we've seen from Echo Fox in the early parts of the split were Acadian on Graves, where he could carry and mechanically outperform. Yeah, Acadian was having a phenomenal first part of the split. A lot of people talking about Rookie of the Split, MVP, all these other awesome buzzwords flowing around for this guy. Recently hasn't been finding as much success, hasn't been able to just pick the team up and put it on his back like he was trying to earlier. But at the same time, that means that they have to work together just as a more coherent unit. One guy shouldn't have to hard carry every single game. Yeah, and that's why people look at Acadian and Frog and go, oh man, maybe they're not playing as well, etc. But I, I feel like that's unfair because there are players like Keith and Gate. And just to give an example, the last match that they had, the combined score of the bottom lane was one kill, 21 deaths, and 19 assists. Whoa. It's like, it's really not just on Acadian and Froggen to carry. There's sometimes you have to carry, but you need to not be an anti-carry. You need to like, uh, you were talking about it earlier. It's like, you know, you need these guys to step up, but not to like the second floor or anything. You need them to get out of the basement and just get on the ground level. Right, just get on the first floor, hang out just right there in the living room. Just, we're not asking you to climb 17 sets of stairs. We're just asking you to not be in the basement. And that's what they've got to be working on. We need to see a stronger performance from the Echo Fox bottom lane this time around because they are up against a team that, like we mentioned earlier, is having a lot of positive momentum right now. Earlier on in this split was one of the bottom teams actually tied for last at one point. Yes, with one win, they were tied for last when they played Envy. We were joking around, you know, it's the battle of the bottom right now because it was. It was legitimately the ninth and 10th place team, but Dignitas are now surging. Four of their last six games they have won, and they're looking to make it five of their last seven and start getting those wins in the second half of the split. It has been a winning formula for them so far. But I think the fact that the top half of the map is so strong for them and their bottom half is so consistent, it's kind of what Echo Fox are wishing their team was like right now. Right. Where their bottom just holds on, their bottom can actually play things like Jin, Ezreal, sit back, take care of a lot of the engages, be safe. Uh, and then their top half of the map will coordinate and start dives, start three-man pincering, etc., to do mid lane uh, uh, dives and get turrets. It's the same plan you talk about for Echo Fox, because that's what everybody says about these guys. You know, it's all about when Looper and Froggen go off. It's all about when Acadian gets rolling. Keith and Gator kind of just left to their own devices as like, okay, they're there. But like you said, that's what they want to be, is what Dig is in terms of how both are currently executing very similar plans. Oh, and once again, this is interesting because this actually is someday picking up one CS. This will mean oh. he, no, it's actually fine. He does this a few times. It means he hits level two, one creep faster in the top lane. The little Raptors are worth so much. And so someday we'll shield himself, not take too much damage from Looper. And he'll walk to lane and assume he, oh, he actually goes for the harass instead of the CS. Ooh, all right. Both wow. of them going to be missing out on those first what? melee minions. What? It might be tank versus tank, but these guys are yeah. not going to be wasting any time. But it's also the, the Grasp of the Undying for Looper, which is a much more consistent and higher uptime mastery than the Courage of the Colossus for Someday. So Someday was actually going for really strange. I think it was a strange trade for him to try and go for. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. Actually, is he trying to get the wave shoved in on him? Is Chaser going to go for the level 3 dive top? Ooh, the early attention. Uh, I don't know. Maybe being paid top side. Chaser does like to help Someday out whenever he, he does. Can. It's a two minute and 45 second when he enters the tri brush. There's no no ward there. He wasn't spotted, but he is going to go to the other side. Just backing up for now. Oh, Looper's not going to be too aggro just yet. Yeah. Chaser stops, so he's delaying his jungle pathing, and he's kind of getting to the point where he has to go now or he has to just back and do the rest of his jungle. So, yeah. There we go. They also don't know because you saw just pings on the mini map from Acadian. He said Chaser is on the bottom side of the map right now. Right, they have no clue that he was sitting around the top side for that long, waiting to see if he could make some sort of a play. So Chaser just going to be slightly behind as blows are traded back and forth between the supports here in the bottom lane. Gate easily able to proc that Thunderlords on the Lulu as Acadian clears out his top side on the Graves. 
both of these junglers. You mentioned Acadian's ability to carry on the Graves. Chaser also on a champion that can do plenty of carrying in his own right with the Rengar. These aren't tank-style junglers. These are the kinds of guys that, if they get rolling, can be a real menace. And they can start snowballing and taking over the game to carry junglers. Something that North America has never really strayed away from. We had like an Ivern craze for like a week. Yeah, we don't and play then... that champion nearly as much as <laughs> EU does or anywhere else, really. Everybody was like, all right, this, th this can't carry as much. Let's put our mechanics to use. This doesn't kill other players. This just protects mine. I'm more concerned with making sure their life bars hit zero than my guys. Exactly. That ends up being something that the North American junglers, you know what? comment from Anori that there's too many toxic ones, but it's just because <laughs> just because they try, man. But hold on. This is actually Chaser with four Ferocity. It's going to fall off, though, out of combat for too long. Yep. Rip out of combat, Ferocity, Ringo. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to go mid. Kadian is on the opposite side, and he's going to pick up these Raptors. But they started on that side. It's a good timing from him, knowing actually when they would spawn. Yeah. Chills Free there. Raptor camp going to him. Chaser's going to be just a little bit too late as he walks over here. He'll walk over the ward and find that camp cleared out as Acadian gets himself away. Level 5 now compared to the level 4 on Chaser. That early time that Chaser spent in the brush top lane, obviously attributing to that edge for Acadian ever so slightly. Mid lane King getting himself shoved in for now. Just going to be farming up with the Time Winder as Keith and Gate remain even in farm in the bottom lane. And this is a part of the map that we're going to be keeping an eye on throughout the game. Because Keith and Gate, we already mentioned, this is the part of Echo Fox that we're looking to have a greater impact yep. than in previous maps. This isn't warded, and they just pushed out forward. Now they're getting shoved away. Lod Eed forward, and that looked like they actually want to ward. There they go. Nice yep. E. As soon as Lod E's forward with less than half of his HP <laughs> remaining, you got to be thinking if you're Keith and Gate, something is weird about this. Something's fishy, yeah. Something doesn't add up here. Sometimes you got to play like you're a hurt animal and that you're actually defenseless as your jungler comes in. Got to be an actor. Oh, no, please don't kill me. That would be bad. <laughs> Definitely not a scary Rengar in that bush. Looper underneath his turret against the Nautilus, someday utilizing the bullying power of that champion. Even if he doesn't have the laning dominant Keystone, he's still a very laning dominant champion. It's mostly because he got to back and buy two Doran's rings, uh, and Looper has not backed and used teleport yet. So it's the someday, fact, the, the someday factor uh, of backing early and got himself a little bit extra in terms of combat power. Well, now that Looper has got the chance to back, pick up that completed Spectre's Cow, that's going to give him a lot of resilience towards the kind of damage that'll be coming out from the Nautilus, pretty much strictly AP. You can throw in a little bit of extra physical damage there for the auto attacks, but Looper taking the opportunity to jump in here. Spirit's Refuge going to be keeping him protected as he knocks off that shield from Sunday, sticking around long enough to get one more Grass proc. Yeah, he's going to keep going for him here, back and forth. Junglers actually look like they spotted each other out, or at least Acadian got spotted by Chaser. I'm unsure if... Acadian's level 6, though. Like, that's yeah. a really big amount of extra burst yeah. on this and grave. Is he going to jump in on him? He is. Acadian's starting up the fight. Stand United comes in. Chaser in some real danger here. Still looking to finish him off. First blood over to Acadian. As he tries to get himself away, Keen's trying to finish this one off. Chrono Break going to be forced out. Comes back into the fight. Expecial grabbing the kill, but some days made his way in as well. Looper in some trouble, exhausted, cornered. It's a three versus two. Gates made his way into the fight. He doesn't have wild growth. Keen's going to be forced to flash. Looper is two. Gets himself away from the Ooh. turret. Going to be sidestepping that anchor. And it's ultimately just one for one. Yeah, I actually think the response there from Dignitas was slightly faster on how quickly they got Expecial in compared to how Gate got in. And that could have gone very wrong. But the fact that they had all roamed around the same time ended up being good. But I would say that Echo Fox get a little bit more out of it. Gate gets, or Keith gets to stay bottom. Farm pushed the wave into the turret. Doesn't miss any experience at all. Hits level six now. And also the fact that they got first blood. Yeah, first blood obviously worth more than any other blood. Unless it's kill streak blood, that one's actually worth a slightly higher. Though. Always nice to be the first one to make sure that you're getting that objective. Whether it be the first blood, the turret first blood, anything's better as long as you get there first. Yeah, and Acadian, he was somebody that oh, was starting to lose out on first blood percentages. It had dropped drastically in his involvement, but this is a game where it seems like he's back on it and invaded, was level six. Knew he had the limit here, but hold on. Chaser looking top has the ulti. Looper! 
Chaser sees this. He's saying he's pretty low, and man, he just gets the burst. No minions, problem. Minions, minions, minions. Whoa. Minions. Almost blocking him off there. Acadian shows up. Almost has the ulti again. There's no blast cone. Acadian dashes over the wall. Thunderlord's going to be procced. Acadian just needs a few more seconds. Three. Give it to two. Oh. Nope. Doesn't even need it. Give Grab it to the kill with the auto Keen. attacks. No, I'm just kidding. No. Let Keen get in and, you know, save him, I guess. Still, Acadian going to pick up the kill. There was no way that uh, Frog was going to get there. My mind had actually just played with me for a second there. I don't Thought know Keen why. was coming to grab the kill. I was like, I was like what? Him. Yeah. I don't know why. For some reason, I just think it's not so much of a keen champion. But still, jump in, gets the ultimate there, and now Acadian tries to back off, but like someday is in here. And so when he's backing up, <laughs> Expecial's already there. Special just nukes him. Yeah, Expecial's there, and that's really kind of the, the extra that they weren't expecting. If Expecial wasn't there, then that kill doesn't go over. Keen flashes away, and this is just so many summoner spells down early on that the invade top for the kill on Looper is a good move, but then on top of it, Acadian gets the counter kill onto Chaser. Starting to see some serious CS differences now, too. 66 in the Graves compared to 42 in the Rengar now. A lot of times, jungle CS can just be attributed to who's killing Gromps and who's killing Krug. Yeah, we saw him take the Raptors, etc. But at the same time, it's still something worth pointing out. Almost as much of a CS difference there in the top lane between Someday and Looper, too. Someday really farming up a storm on this Nautilus. Yeah, if you look across the board, it's just Ignatas are, are ahead in every lane at the moment. Mid, bottom, top. It's just the jungle right now with Chaser making some proactive moves. And the fact that Acadian is oh, two kills now and punishing him, taking away his farm and actually having a really good route up a level. One thing I do want to point out, though, about these junglers, Acadian did go for the Tracker's Knife versus the Skirmisher's Saber on Chaser. So Chaser will have extra combat potential mm -hmm. through that, whereas Acadian is going to be more focused on the vision game. We see this a lot against Rengars. Instead of having the dueling power against the Rengar, you will go for vision control so you know exactly where he is and that's where you take away his power. You don't have to fight him if you know if the Rengar's in the vicinity and you can protect your laners, which I think for Echo Fox is definitely great because you need to protect these laners from Chaser. Chaser will just lane gank with the ultimate under pretty much any lane except from the mid. I'm sure you get the eyes over your head, but that doesn't exactly protect you from all the damage that comes in from him. It no. It lets you know, hey, you're going to be dead in a couple of seconds. So. <laughs> the automatic crit Chaser really does hurt. Him. Yeah. Keen with his blue buff, Froggen with his. Both of these two have the ability to just spam the waves down at their leisure. Very little amount of time remaining on Froggen's, though, so we'll have to go back to paying a little bit more attention to that resource bar. You can see some vision being placed down around the Dragon Pit by yeah. Dignitas. It's Infernal, so yeah, everybody wants it. This is the one that's worth fighting over. This is the one that teams will just throw themselves in and haphazardly kill themselves to make sure that they can grab. Yeah, something's going to go down bottom very shortly, though. Acadian around here, the Scuttle Crab has already been taken. Sweeper about to come up for Gate and we'll see what he sweeps. All right, just tossing the ward into the tri brush. Oh, the collapse is coming. Dignitas looking to grab him for this one. Someday comes in, Acadian gonna be caught out. Wild Growth is down. Oh, the damage is through! And Acadian's grabbing kill number one, still getting himself out alive for now. Keen's gonna be grabbing the retaliation kill as Fox is able to make it two for one so far. Someday now gonna be chased down. Froggen can chase him over Trying the wall. He flashes. himself away, flashes over the wall. Froggen still wants more damage, not going to chase over. Not Doesn't have the ability to, the flash not quite available, but Echo Fox will take the fight. Uh, Looper's going to TP back top and actually try to push this turret in because Someday has no way to get back there. That's the beauty of the Shen. You can use your globals back to back, enter the fight. If you win the fight, you go back to where you were with a shoving, lin with shoving lane and start getting some damage on the turret. And Someday's all the way still back in the base, just now walking past the inhibitor. That's a lot of EXP missed out there. Yeah, look at the response here because what happens is Someday backs, TPs in immediately, then Shen will come through. Gate takes a lot of damage, but it's actually the ultimate from Gate that helps Acadian so much, and then he's able to throw out his combo against the wall, blows three people up to half HP, and then Froggen gets the charm before Keen can actually chrono break. Stopping Keen before Killed. the ultimate. Really, really nice there for Echo Fox. Gives them the edge in that fight, the two for one advantage. Brings them up to about a 400, 300-ish gold lead now. And this is what's good to see from these two teams, both of them, Echo Fox and Dignitas alike, where they are all gathering for the skirmishes. It's the teamwork, the communication, especially already on the top side of the map. It's like, what is this guy doing here? But that's the extra surprise factor, where if he comes over with a blast cone, it's like, wait, how did he get here? And they're just dueling forever in this top side. 
I think he went in, and now Looper doesn't have vision, and there they go. They might stun him up here. One side's got a lot of help coming. Looper's in some real danger. Taunt Flash getting himself away. They won't chase this one underneath the turret. Nobody else is nearby for Echo Fox, and that means Dignitas is going to commit for this Tier 1. Chaser looking to grab the kill through the ulti if he can. Acadian and Gabe, meanwhile, onto the Infernal Drake. Looper getting himself Almost. bursted, tries to use Spirit's Refuge. One more hit will do it. Chaser with the flash to make sure he seals the deal. Infernal, though, going to be going over to Fox. Yep, but that's going to be first turret going down for Dignitas. That's going to be momentum on top side of the map. They have more people here, and this is going to be faster turret takes. Fox have to answer with mid, and they have to answer with bottom tier two if they actually want to get an advantage. Keen flexing those muscles in the 1v2 against Acadian and Frog, and going to be looking to hold these guys as long as he can. Throws out more time winders, clears away the waves, but the turret only needs one more hit. It is taken down as the top lane tier two will also fall on the side of Echo Fox. Dignitas grabbing that one as Fox gets the bottom side tier yeah. two. There's actually, just turrets all over the place. This is actually a better macro answer from Echo Fox. They get the Infernal Drake, and then they get three turrets to the two that were taken. Dignitas did get the first one, but Echo Fox ended up taking one more, and now they really just have to worry about this top side of the map. The bottom is now completely theirs, and that's where you want right now because the Drakes are going to be coming up, whereas the top side, six minutes until Baron is even on the table to consider. So having that top tier two down, not as big of a deal, especially when the enemy has a Shen with double globals. Look at that. Despite the recent rocky games, the fans still got a lot of faith in Echo Fox. 69% think they're going to be getting the win today. I mean, this team was really revitalized by the fact that they brought in Akadi and this rookie that started having some great performances. Froggen started being a bit more of a leader and having some aggressive, proactive play. And so, you know, there's a lot to be excited about for Echo Fox. Dignitas on the other side. I would say there's a lot to be excited about here, too. Someday came in, and it looked a bit mediocre, like he couldn't get completely unlocked by Chaser. But Chaser has now stepped up, has been having the performances we expect from both him and Someday. And Keen has been kind of the surprise for me so far. Doesn't have to rely on those counter picks as much, those cheesy picks, or the things that people would call cheese. Uh, and has been playing pretty standard, and it's been working. Dignitas now looking to even up this turret count. They got three men in the bottom lane and a lot of minions under this tier one. Nobody from Echo Fox is going to be showing up to stop this. Instead, they're just going to make the trade topside. Yeah. Uh, people always talk about, you know, are lane swaps gone? Well, they, sometimes they come back after four, after sort of like seven minutes, you know? Uh, you go back to playing with tempo advantages. You play with how fast can you rush these down? And then who's going to chicken out? There's four here to the three that are on the top side. Echo Fox are going to be a little bit slower. Who swerves they, first? But they do have a Graves. And I will say, this could be very risky because now, now Dignitas have inside track on mid. Froggen can't shove up as much as he would want to. So you can see Gate playing off to the bottom right, making sure they don't get flanked or anything like that. Because it could be so scary with the Rengar coming in. All right, they're both going to swerve at the same time. No base race, 16 minutes yep. of the game. I was kind of hoping for it. My favorites. I was kind of hoping for it, but not today. The game's a little bit too close to be making crazy decisions like that. Only 500 gold separates these two squads. Nobody really running away with the game quite yet. Three, two, and one, the most kills on a single player on Acadian's Graves, trying to be that hard carry that he was during the first part of the split. Black Cleaver now completed. Remember, Black Cleaver did get changed around a bit, so we got more health, but a little bit less damage. And along with all the shields and health boosts he's going to be getting from the Shen and the Lulu, that means Acadian is very difficult to take down. Very difficult to take down. The 100 more HP, and also the fact that it just it's so good on Graves because it stacks with, with his bullets, so you actually get three applications per shot. So it just takes two. It just takes this full rounds to actually get six on somebody. You'll hear the crack of the uh, maxed out Black Cleaver happen very quickly. Chaser, on the other hand, still going for Black Cleaver himself. The Kindle Gem does build into that. Keith, though, not caught out Ooh. as much as you would think. Keith baiting Keen into that one. Thinks he has an opportunity to jump onto the Echo Fox AD carry. Instead, just finds Gate waiting for him. Has to blow his flash defensively. And that's what you want to see from this bottom lane. You want to see them having good performances. They have been a bit of the underperforming uh, aspect here for Echo Fox lately, as well as Looper, who oh, has been having those proactive ultimates and been protecting Acadian and Frog and Boat. And in their games yesterday versus Phoenix One, Echo Fox lost control when Keith got caught out. So maybe Keen's looking at this like, hey, yesterday Phoenix One did it. Now I'm going to do it for my team. We're just going to catch oh. Keith, run away with the game. But it doesn't quite work out like that. Echo Fox realizing they can use Keith to bait that trap put Keaton in a bad spot. Yeah, it's so 
It's so weird that the AD carry would be in a side lane against a teleport member. Usually the 1-3-1 split, you would put the Ari there uh, up against him. But it feels like they don't want that matchup just yet. And so even though the split is a 1-3-1, Keith is kind of the answer on the top side. And they keep going between mid and top to help Keith. So Gate was in that area and they had complete ward control of it too. That's why even though Gate or Keith was alone for a little bit there, Keen didn't go in. Because if you look at the river, it's control warded in favor of Echo Fox. So they can run through that area and you won't really know who's coming. Still a very, very close match between these two teams. Drake will be spawning in a little bit over 30 seconds. We saw Echo Fox get the first one off of that macro outplay we were talking about earlier with the Drake plus three turrets in exchange for two turrets. So expect Dignitas to be a little bit more on top of the macro elements behind where everybody's at this time around. Yeah, right now, what you want to see is Dignitas start moving up and placing wards for flank positions so that Keen could get a backline flank uh, after a teleport. But they haven't put anything deep. They actually hit the Scryer's Bloom to get vision. Uh, and then they don't invade as a four-man unit. They try to make sure they have mid-priority. And now they'll have to fight. But there really isn't anything here that an Echo would love to teleport on. So he'll run up there. He'll actually give away top in terms of uh, pushing advantage. Oh, hook on gate. All right, someday trying to start this one off. Going to be backing up now. Parallel Convergence thrown in, but not going to be finding anyone. Chaser's ultimate has been used. Looking for the jump. Going to be finding Acadian over the wall. Wild growth used to keep him safe. But Dignitas just going to go ahead and say, all right, we'll trade the Lulu ult for the Rengar ult. Yeah. Moves yeah. back towards the Drake pit. Still Looper topside. Yeah, and they have to worry about that. Looper has the Tiamat, so he shoves very quickly. He has the wave clear you don't normally expect. Someday he's going to go top to answer, try to wave clear that out but then it will have to be a trade of teleports there. Echo Fox clearing out whatever vision they can. Keen hanging around the mid lane. Fox just have better pressure in these lanes, except for bottom. Mm -hmm. That's the one that they really have to worry about now. They had better pressure top, better pressure mid. And so that's why Echo Fox will have the inside track on his Drake. And it'll be a kind of a late arrival here. Fox takes it down in time, but the TP's coming in. Here we go, Zyrene. They don't want to fight this. Someday, Someday does. comes into the fight. Keen's going to be targeted. Stand United looking to keep him alive. If they can, Keen jumps into the back lines, having a chrono break right back out. Keen's still alive, but Someday's not going to be for long. Chaser drops two. Echo Fox now in a five versus three, looking to hunt down these remaining members. Blast Cone might be able to get him away to safety. Looper jumping in onto Keen, takes the Blast Cone over the wall, and Dignitas gets the remaining guys out. Yeah, and because Echo Fox, I was talking about pressure top, pressure mid, now they have pressure on this mid tier two immediately after that fight they also got the drake on top of it and echo fox are going to come up big after that fight echo fox take down the tier two turret as well as the second drake big objective wins coming out for them now increasing that gold lead up to almost three thousand. feeling good about pulling the trigger taking it when they had the opportunity and you can see just how echo fox we always talk about oh man this guy has so much cs or lane allocations and we don't really talk too much about them in terms of what it means immediately after that fight you saw them shove in mid. Froggen went bottom to catch all of the CS. That's why he's about 30 up and 10 per minute right now for himself. Because he's just so good at recognizing where he needs to be, what he doesn't have to do for his team. He doesn't have to be mid to help them shove. They've already got that covered. He needs to go bottom so there is no pushing wave there and pick up all of the CS that has been slowly, slowly building up. Even in this replay, you see the bottom wave is in favor of Dignitas and will shove in. But someday, blows the ultimate there. Rest of the team, a little bit slow there. Lot, it's hard for him to get a piece of this. And then even without the Lulu ultimate onto both members, you can't put them on Acadian and Keith both. Uh, they both end up living there, and it was split damage because there's just so much AoE coming through. And Keen couldn't get a piece of it. He couldn't get the exact parallel convergence he wanted. Now yeah, look at that. Acadian just doing so much damage in these fights. The Black Cleaver, the spread of his auto attack, and the Qs in R. Honestly, just doing so much here. Yeah, everybody else is pretty close if you compare them roll by roll yeah. in this graphic, but it's really just Acadian who shines over Chaser. 2,052 compared to 853. Definitely shows what Acadian is capable of doing on this Graves. Yeah, you also have to be a little bit careful too because Keen, he could do so much in these fights if you don't force him to chrono break out. You saw he did 700 damage where he actually had to abandon that fight halfway through. Now can Echo Fox find anything else with that victory, with the fact that they now have a more measurable lead? Almost 4,000 gold. They're moving into enemy territory. Yeah, and now they're going to start getting flank wards up for Looper to TP from the bottom side. They're going to clear out all this vision throughout the jungle, and there's no Tier 2s left for them to take. 
So I expect Echo Fox to start making plays for Baron. I feel like that's their typical style here. Uh, and they have struggled at closing games out even since the beginning of the split where they do have advantages. You know, the whole storyline of Echo Fox have such a great early game. It hasn't changed much here in this game, but it wasn't always the case throughout the middle parts of the split. Or be it thrown over the wall, Dignitas isn't going to be caught out by that. Oh, someday looking to start TP the fight. Play. Here we go. Stand United. Wild growth. Gate keeping himself alive. Keen into the back line. Parallel convergence. Doesn't even need it. Already going to be popping Frog and Acadian trying to run away. It's a double kill for the Dignitas mid laner. Chaser looking to make it free. There we go. Only two left alive for Echo Fox. Keith and Looper standing, but the rest are down. And Dignitas now have the opportunity to look for Baron. Yeah, Chaser though, incredibly low. You have to be a little bit wary here. Looper and Keith are up. Keith has the arrow. Wonder if this is enough for them. All five are up. Very important to keep Chaser alive. You've got to have the smite secure. Looper and Keith want to try to stop this, but two versus five is still a dangerous oh, proposition. So hard. Volley gonna be fired in. Baron down to 2k. Looper doing his best here. Chaser still being kept alive. Keen gets the killing spree. Over on to Keith as Looper runs away through the backside. Keen still looking to make even more happen here. Timewinder's landing doesn't really want any more to do with this fight. They will happily take the Baron plus one. That setup was just awful from Echo Fox. You look at yeah. the way the map is set up. Keith isn't there. Keith is top left and he can't reach his team. What is he doing there? He was trying to shove the wave and nobody else was around. So the team is cut off. They're sectioned off. They wanted control of that top bush, but it just looks like Dignitas gets it. Then literally Keith does nothing in this fight because he's not there. Doesn't contribute an arrow, nothing. And they get TP flanked. They didn't sweep behind them. They ended up not actually going for anything that you would think is, is something that's reasonable in that play. Like, what are they expecting? Are they expecting that Keith can walk through that area? What is going to happen there? And, and I can even, like, just when we go back to the items, Keith has Sweeper now because he's like, screw these TPs. They're TP flanking and they're actually cutting them off. They don't have enough vision control. And now Froggen has the blue trinket in mid lane. So they're just kind of swapping roles around here. They have three Sweepers on Echo Fox. They're just so afraid of these TPs from Keen. All of Echo Fox sans Acadian barely did more damage than Someday did in that fight because yeah. Keith got a grand total of zero That's since a, he had to walk all the way around to the topside tri brush to get back in. That fight is one of those ones that starts and you're just like, half of us want this, the other half are like, why the hell are we here? And Echo Fox with a lead should never be in that position. You should never have those situations. Even if you group as five, you know, those solo queue games where you're like, just group guys. Hold on, speaking of just grouping. Oh, Keen having a chrono break, getting himself in a little bit of trouble. Now Looper gonna be counterattacked. Dignitas almost get themselves in a tough spot with their mid laner getting caught out there, but luckily he's on the Echo, so he's got the tools to deal with that. Dignitas now sitting dead even in terms of gold with their opponents. That lead that you mentioned from Echo Fox, you don't want to throw away with fights like that. That has evaporated. Yeah, and, and that's not something where it's just Keith, right? It's mm -hmm. He's doing his job of shoving in the top wave. It's the whole team not recognizing exactly how they're going to do the next move. What is the next move and how are they going to execute on it? Because there's no way Keith actually traverses that terrain without getting bonked because he's just yeah. going to walk into three people in a bush. Yeah, you had three people in the bush, one right beside the bush. It was not a situation the Ash could go anywhere near as Dignitas now looking to finish off this tier one. Minions or not, they pick it up. That takes them up to five total compared to the six of their opponents. Keen in the bottom lane with a very large wave enchanting it with the Baron buff. He's going to be forced to answer that one as the push continues mid. Yep, he also has Lich Bane, so every auto attack that he gets on this turret will be huge, but he doesn't want to engage unless he can get Keith in a stun. Well, and now the Virgins won't find it. Looper soaking damage from four people, taking almost no actual hurt from it. Yep, Spirit's Refuge is a really potent spell. <laughs> it's super good if you can use the dodge zone correctly on Shen. That'll be the Mountain Drake, though, going over to Dignitas because they've shoved the waves in here. And now the gold is even. But the advantage is two for Echo Fox and one for Dignitas here. This will be their first break, but one of the more useful ones for them, too. Absolutely. Always good to have that extra objective taking power as the game goes on. There will be one more Drake spawning this game before the Elder starts showing up. It's going to be around 33 minutes. It'll be the second ocean. So not the most valuable Drake in the world. But previously, when you're looking at Drakes, you're just thinking about Echo Fox because they were in control up until that throw in the Dignitas jungle. And now Dignitas, they're feeling a lot better. This game could go either way with how close everything is. The Baron buff not really going to be an issue here any longer. So at least Echo Fox can breathe a sigh of relief with that. But they've got to manage this situation somehow. Yeah, Echo Fox already had all of the tier twos down. 
and Dignitas still have that one mid to pick up, so they still have a turret to get back into this game. Uh, but they're still down. Even after they took the Baron, that's what got them back into the game, because Echo Fox was starting to get a stranglehold on it, and they slipped. They just let their grip loosen for a second, and that's immediately when Dignitas took that fight, and they rounded the corner as Gate was coming in. And then also at the same time, the TP flanks were on point, and that's what they're looking for here. Dignitas want those TP flanks. Baron power play of plus 329 gold is generally a bad thing because yep. remember, when you kill Baron, you get 1500 gold. Yes. If the Baron power play is less than 1500, that means some bad stuff happened in between taking him and the buff wearing off. But what happened? They barely got anything off of that. Right. And it just seems like Echo Fox are CSing a little bit better right now in mid lane and in top, uh, where it wasn't the case before. And in the jungle, Acadian has almost 100 up compared to Chaser, just constantly farming everything he can, trying to carry on this Graves. Look at the gold discrepancy between these two, though. Still only about 1,500, despite those CS differences. That's what we were talking about with sometimes it's just a bunch of baby chickens and Krugs, whereas Chasers might be more about Gromps or more about... I don't know, buff camps. Oh, Something Chaser. Is not a small creep, but now Chaser. Boom. Getting himself farmed up just like a creep. Keys grabbing the kill credit on that one. Echo Fox with a free pickup. 40 seconds now to punish in this 5v4. Yep, and they'll keep pushing mid. Looper will continue pushing bottom. And Keen now hovering in this zone where it doesn't look like he knows exactly what he wants to do. And this is Echo Fox. You can see they just prioritize lanes so highly here. Where even after that play, they don't want to run up mid and keep pushing. They're like, all right, top, let's push out top wave. Let's farm our Gromp. And so they're just trying to maximize the amount of efficiency they have here. Instead of funneling multiple people down mid, they have to play the game where, okay, we killed Chaser. It doesn't mean we immediately get an objective. And Keen does take away the red. Yep, Keen will deny that from Keith. At least a small victory to take for losing his jungler there in the mid lane. So Dignitas happy that they... Didn't have any real consequence for giving away that pick. Still an eight to seven game. Echo Fox showing that they weren't completely rattled by the lost fight in enemy territory. Still able to get together and say, hey, we can set up the pick here on the chaser. Let's take this guy down. But it's always a bit of a heartbreaker when you can't get anything else based off of that. Sadly for them, there were no neutral objectives up to take. And with all those tier twos down, like you mentioned earlier, the only thing you can actually do against your opponents is try to break the base, and it just wasn't a situation for that. Yeah, and I feel like they're going to break the base via Baron fights or Baron takes here. Echo Fox want pressure bottom and mid. That will sacrifice pressure top. That means that the Baron will be able to ward it. They'll be able to sweep it out with their triple sweeper. We're starting to see some serious item power spikes coming online now too, Zyrene. The Guardian Angel plus the Frozen Heart plus the Spirit Visage for someday means he's incredibly tanky. Plus you gotta get him, kill him twice. You've got both the Proto Belt and the Zonia's Hourglass on Keen, so two very powerful activatable items for the mid lane Echo. And Laud, Trinity Force, Blade of the Ruined King, Last Whisper just now being purchased, as well as the fully completed and stacked Muramana. Very scary on the Ezreal. Yeah, and even on the other side with Keith, the fact that the Last Whisper is now 45% bonus armor penetration immediately, that means like Ninja Tabis, they're already getting 15 lethality uh, from purchasing the Last Whisper. Uh oh, someday. Spider Man's yep. himself out of there. Taking there. only about half his health bar. And like you can see there, you heard the crack from the Black Cleaver getting stacked to six very quickly. That's going to be the, the extra benefit of having that Graves and Keen, the split push, the 1 3 1. Yep. Great job seizing that opportunity, taking that down solo. Now going to be throwing out Parallel Convergence. Tries to grab the stun onto Looper. Looper barely getting himself out of it, but that's enough. Huh? As a special is forced to flash away. Acadian looking to finish this off if he can. A little bit more damage. They've got it. Now going to be looking for Chaser 2. Acadian continuing to dash forward. Collateral damage going to be jumped away from Chaser, keeping himself alive there. Frog and grabbing the charm on to Someday. He's very tanky. He's got the Guardian Angel. Not likely in any real danger here. It's an inhibitor turret traded for a support, essentially. Definitely a better trade on the side of Dignitas, but Froggen and the rest. Wow, this is aggressive. They want that. Echo Fox can now look at Baron. Oh, they're going to try to pick. Someday going to be the one walking into it. The tank has been taken down incredibly low. Parallel Convergence thrown into the fight, but Looper is now jumping in on top of Dignitas. The Chrono Break doesn't get Keen too far back. Acadia and the rest of Fox going to be healed up from the redemption as Looper gets wild growth on the front line. Echo Fox having shoved the enemy tank away. He's got teleport though. Remember, he can make his way back into the fight. Echo with no chrono break means he's also at a much higher risk level if he dives into a fight. Yeah, he TP'd to top side though. He'll start pushing the wave out or going for a flank. 
but I don't think they're starting it just yet. Echo Fox not feeling comfortable with that, thinking it might be a little bit too much of a throw, a little bit too risky. Oh, Arrow Chris on! Arrow finds its way onto Lon, a little bit slow with the E, now gonna be caught out, no QSS to save him! And Froggen will grab that kill for himself. Sometimes you delay the QSS a little bit too long, and they get you. Yo, that was back-to-back -back arrows from Keith. We didn't see it, but the way that X Special got caught was an arrow, and Someday caught oh, too. Someday, with his AD carry picked off, hangs around mid lane a little bit too long. Guardian Angel or no, he is gonna be dropping. Echo Fox just waiting around that body for it to come right back up and send it right back down. And Dignitas will go get the Ocean Drake, but this will be a Baron here started up by Echo Fox. They definitely feel comfortable starting it now. Well, Dignitas knows there's no way they're going to contest that Baron with just a three versus five. You've got to take the kind of crappy consolation prize of the Ocean Drake and yep. let them have the Baron. And Froggen will end up taking the red buff away, so Keen actually gets nothing there. And Echo Fox, even though they let the game slip a little bit, they're right back in. They are right back in control indeed. 3,000 gold advantage almost for these guys. They've got the Baron up. But what they really need to do with this is use it properly and crack that base open like you mentioned earlier. This is their ticket to enemy territory. Yeah, this is an arrow that hits a special from the previous time. Sorry, this one hits Lod. And this is the one that the most recent pick. So the E, a little bit delayed. He has flash as well. So they just don't have vision coverage. The fact that a special got picked the first time means their sight stone is dead. They don't have a tracker's knife on their jungler. They only have a trinket ward from Keen who is splitting and someday but it's still not enough because then they have to face check into this pick composition where Froggen has the Charm Max second and is waiting for those uh, uh, picks. All right, Echo Fox, you've got the Baron. You've got a slight kill advantage, a little bit of extra gold in your pockets. Whew. It's time to go towards that enemy base. Yeah, speaking of extra gold in your pockets, it's a uh, Flame Horizon in the jungle for Acadian, and he has a Death's Dance, Ooh. and he also has a Phantom Dancer. It's only about 2,000 gold up. That's a so spicy build. You can definitely tell it's a lot of jungle creeps, but still, that's a that's a high damage build. The Phantom Dancer was a, a special for a lot of Graves jungles where they would go that second because it gave you a very good cadence for your auto attacks. But the Death's Dance is so much healing because you'll heal off of your R, you'll heal off your Q, and all the auto attacks as well. You pretty much have to burst him down, but this is on a team with a Shen and a Lulu. It's very, very hard to burst him down. But I also like the fact that you know, it's hard to burst him down. He has two control wards in his inventory, and he already has an Elixir of Wrath as well. So if Acadian is allowed to auto attack, uh -oh, you're not killing Frog him and getting himself caught out. Keen looking to find the burst if he can. True shot barrage into the Echo Fox lines, but Keen immediately has to get right back on out. Keith. Jason looking to come in. Keith in danger. Going to be rampaged on. Keen grabbing the kill, and Acadian is in retreat. Looper still frontlining. More parallel convergence is coming in. Lod in the back line over the wall, able to find the damage. Frog and now might be in some danger. Finds the charm onto Lod. Gate looking to help him out. Dignitas has lost one, but found two, trying to hold their base. Keen, Zonia's hourglass to keep 1v3? himself alive. Acadian's able to find one. Might be looking for two, healing himself up off the minions. X Special now in danger. A double kill with Thunderlords. <laughs> Give him the dance. Acadian grabs the kills, grabs the turret, grabs the inhibitor. You're seeing those auto attacks heal him for like 260. The death stance, the fact that he's able to reduce the damage from other people with a Phantom Dancer, and then the Elixir of Wrath on top. Acadian, he's going to be full health shortly, and he almost 1v3 there under turret. Go get him, Echo Fox. Let's see what you got. Can you actually make more happen out of this frog and jumping in on top a lot, grabbing the kill. A killing spree for the Echo Fox mid laner. They are not willing to stop now that they have found this chance to push forward. Yep, going to take a recall here. Going to go back to base, buy what they can. And this was an interesting fight because this looked like Laud was actually going to run away with it here because Froggen gets caught, a lot of damage comes through, Keen gets hit with the arrow, Chrono breaks back, and then he jumps in on the Keith, and then Chaser does as well. They blow him up, and now watch Laud here. Laud on the right side, hitting Looper, hitting Looper, hitting Looper, hits Froggen, hits Looper. Nobody is pressuring Laud, kills Looper, hits Froggen, and that charm there is really what turns that, because that would have been most likely Froggen getting aggressed on immediately afterwards, and then that there. Acadian with the 1v3 under turret afterward. That is just huge. Dodging what? out from the turret. Yeah, oh my god. Right there, and then Look. boom, style points. <laughs> Tell them all about it. 260 on that heal there with the auto attack. Like, this is just a ridiculous build where you have to kill him. You have to get a stun on him in the first place, and then you have to kill him in that stun. And look at the itemization from Acadian now. The last item will be something with a BF sword. He is not willing to go defensive whatsoever. Jesus. Top lane and hitter going down 7,092 damage in the last fight. Good lord, man.
We saw Lod free fire for so long, and he was still a thousand damage behind that. Yeah, and on top of that, Lod has a Blade of the Ruined King, and he's hitting a tank. He's, there's a lot of HP to go through there, but Akadium is in the back line, killing Someday, killing Keen, killing Expecial. What a game. Game number one has been so far, yeah. Tyreen. I want to know what that last item is. If that's a Bloodthirster and he's just going for a full, you can't kill me, bro, Bill. Full lifesteal. <laughs> full Rambo. <laughs> a Rambo build just in the middle of three people. <laughs> they do first blood. <laughs> Welcome to the gun show. Yeah. He did get first blood. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. This is, this is perfect. Meta. We, we, it's ultra meta. actually Rambo. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone subbing in for Acadian, game number two. <laughs> or maybe Acadian is just, you know, the new Rambo. Next movie coming up. I dig it. He's working on them guns. They almost there. Baron power play plus 4,449 gold. Those are the kind of numbers that you look for with your Baron power play stats, Zyrene. Yeah. That shows that Echo Fox was able to achieve what they were looking for and even more off of that. The enemy base now with two inhibitors down means it's time to put bodies in the bot lane and look for that third. And Echo Fox, oh, this would put them in a really good spot if they end up start starting to climb the standings because they, oh, it was the even and odd week, whole curse thing. Now half it's curse, just half meme. Yeah, now it's mostly true. Now it's the curse becoming less of a meme, but actually is Echo Fox just sliding down the standings more? <laughs> it's the panic button for a lot of Echo Fox fans because they're in danger of missing playoffs when this team in top shape looks like a playoff team. They've taken down some of the best. And when you look at who won this matchup last time they played each other, it was actually Echo Fox walking away with the win over Dignitas 2-1. So if they beat Dignitas, it means Dignitas, in order to pass him, would need to win two more. Arrow fired off. Going to be fighting its way onto Chaser. Sterix Gage keeping him alive. Keen jumping into the fight. Redemption going to be called down from both sides. Keen Chrono breaking himself out of trouble there. Wild growth onto Key. Dignitas now with their jungler in critical condition, having to back away from this one for a second. Remember, the super minions are going to keep pushing in the other lanes. Yeah. Looper's just hanging out in the base. This is interesting because they have both those down. Elder Dragon's on the table, and the Baron is on in 35 seconds. Echo Fox, they walk up because if they lose this fight, they will lose Elder, and that could be so risky. Hold on, though, Gate. Oh, Gate getting himself popped at the very start. Someday now soaking damage as he chases after Keen the Keen's going to be caught out. Stan United keeping him alive. Not going to be doing enough. Keen now onto Akkadian and shut down. Froggen grabbing the kill, but Akkadian falls as well. Dignitas now trying to find Looper for a second time after the Guardian Angel revives him. Flashing away from the dredge line. One for three. Dignitas gets their fight. A Froggen still really healthy also has Spirit Rush now. Plus the base yeah. being assaulted by these super minions. Turrets are both very, very critically low. They need to get back here and stop these. They're going to lose. Fight from Chaser just to try to stop one of the super minions in time. Are they going to lose one of them? That cannon minion is taking so much damage. And they're going to walk in. Froggen's here. Froggen and Looper looking to bring these down if they can. Looper gets a little bit too close with a little bit too few health Chaser. remaining. Froggen jumped on and brought down. Can they make it Looper too? Yes, I think they can. Takes a little bit of work, but they get them. The late unofficial, wait, not even late and unofficial. They grab yep. the ace just in time. Yeah, middle inhibitor respawns, but they do lose both of their turrets, but the top inhibitor will respawn very shortly. This gives them a little bit of a window where Froggen is not on the field and Looper, and they can start doing that Baron, which I assume they'll start doing during this replay. Charm almost hits Keen there, but watch Gate. Gate is walking up, and then all of a sudden, someday's like, wait, I don't need to hit this tank. I hit this guy, blows him up. Gate still has flash, still has exhaust. Annihilated there. And now Keith gets pulled in by Someday. Someday with the two back-to-back -back hooks. That's what you're looking for there. Hold on. Acadian's going to try to fight this. Acadian with Infinity Edge as his last item, All by right. the way. Going for the crits. 50% chance Keen on playing. attack. Keen coming into the backside. It's going to be Red Team securing Baron Nasher. Dignitas grabbing that one for themselves. Acadian gets himself killed. Not what Echo Fox was looking for. And Dignitas now have the Baron. They'll have an easy way to push out all these minion waves. And with Looper, who was still dead, and Froggen, who had just come up, now it's time for that Elder Dragon. But I don't know if they'll be able to actually go for it on Fox's side. They don't have a Cadian. They don't have yeah. a Smite. It's for too 35 risky. seconds. We're 42 minutes into this game, Zyrene. These yeah. death timers are big. So what they have to do, Fox have to get here first, set up Vision, and make sure that it's completely swept and that they can get a pick because you know this is the next area that Dignitas wants to enter. If they can pick somebody off, you can dissuade them from doing this, buy some time for Acadian to come back up. That's going to be to check. They're not on it. They didn't check the left bush. 
This might be what Fox needs. Chaser walking himself through. Nope, Echo Fox not in a spot to really punish anything there. Dignitas moves towards the Elder Drake, keeping Keen in the mid lane just in case they try to rush towards the base. Yeah, but that's also Keen getting a flank position. Right. He's closest person to Keen is Keith, and that's not what you want. Acadian's still back at the base. He's got to walk his way down here. Oh, they arrowed him. As the Elder Drake is being taken very, very low. Lod, the one who actually secures it. Keen, Zonia's gonna be activated. Nautilus ultimate onto Looper. He's very tanky, but now he's also very alone. Parallel Convergence thrown out. Keen backing up towards the base because minions are coming in. And Dignitas decides it's time to back away. Time to back away. Take care of your lanes. They have to take care of their top lane. Make sure they don't lose that inhibitor to minions. There's very still good Looper in there. Bottom lane, I assume, will be picked up here very shortly. But I don't, I don't know if you even... I don't think you give that to Acadian. It's nearby, but I think you have to give that to Keith. And Acadian, you're full build. I'm like... Pat in the stats. Keith needs this gold. Pat him up. Keith needs pad, this. Pat, 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 pat. He needs this. Pat, 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 pat. Oh, man. Keith going for a chain vest. Assume Guardian Angel has his last item here. It'll help him stay alive a little bit better against the dive potential of Keen. We've seen how much burst he has in these backlines. Look at that final build. Lich Bane, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, Hourglass, Proto Belt. Keen hurts so much when he jumps in on top of anybody without a ton of magic resistance. Yeah, and you look at Someday's build, he has a locket for himself. That's going to give so much shielding, especially since he's level 18. It will always go off the highest value. And he also has a thorn mail, so Acadian killing him becomes less of a reality. And also Keith. Same story. Keith, no Infinity Edge either. Went for the Bloodthirster to make sure he doesn't kill himself by auto-attacking Someday. And getting an overshield so that he can at least He'll survive against Keen for a few seconds longer. Maybe. Maybe. Lich Bane plus Ravidon's death cap is still a very scary proposition. So is that Nautilus coming in. Keen looking to go into the back line. Going to be bursted pretty hard. Having to back himself away. Chrono Break to stay alive. Looper still going to be tanking. The turret still firing. Dignitas Keen's still dead. pushing. Acadian grabbing the kill onto Keen. Dignitas continues a rampage onto Keen. And the bottom lane has fallen for Echo Fox. The mid lane tier three now going to go immediately after. And Dig has broken the base. They've broken the base. They've gotten that inhibitor. And will they continue to keep pushing? Very buff is off in 15 seconds. That's one more wave. Walking up right now. Elder Drake. They don't have side lanes. Also fading away. Yep. They don't have those side lanes pushed out at all. This is actually a huge brute force here. And we'll see. They have to play this right. Someday, trying to start things off a little bit here. Lod wants to finish off at least one of these turrets before they force out the fight. Someday looking for the opportunity to jump onto one of the value targets. True Shot Barrage coming out. Frog going to be taken down to about half. Still tanking this turret. Someday wants to, but there's no minions anywhere nearby. Acadian going to be locked down. There comes the Nautilus ulti. Acadian is gone. Are Fox's hopes of winning in the same boat? Keith and Gate still dead for another 5, 10 seconds. Lod getting some more Mystic shots, more auto attacks onto Looper. Dignitas going to be having to back away soon. Someday critically low. Oh, these charms just a little bit short there from Frog, and it's happened a few times, and that would have been the difference in this game but now they get to take care of their side waves, tend to them, and now they're in, honestly, not an awful situation considering the situation that Dignitas was in a moment ago without having a top or mid in him, and their base has no turrets left. There's literally one turret left for Dignitas in this whole game. A massive team fight loss for either team just means the game right now. Yep, and that's what they're kind of worried about is they're just trying to live as long as possible, but Dignitas, Considering that they have Baron and Elder Dragon for this, this doesn't actually go as well as they would like. Keen jumps in, Acadian is immediately on him, crits in the face for 900, starts running him back, Chrono breaks back, and then again, boom, boom, that's 1500, another one. That's just back to back to back crits there from Acadian who kills Keen outright, and then they lose their bottom lane for it. So the stall, the defense that they get to hold here for Echo Fox is something that Dignitas wasn't banking on. They were hoping that Keen gets into the back line and actually does a decent amount of damage, which he was unable to do that. Dignitas must have heard me talking about their Baron power play <laughs> compared to Fox's. And they're like, all right, you want a good Baron power play? Check this out. 5,862 5, gold. That's a Baron power play. Yeah. Now, this game has been very confusing because it's been honestly a little bit of a throw after throw here. Oh, on Looper in the bottom side with Chaser coming in. This is a really hard target to pick when you've got the whole team here still taking so long to bring him even low. Redemption yes, coming down. Looper's still alive. 
GA gets proc. He's gonna be coming back in just a second. Someday looking for the lockdown onto Acadian. Fox cannot afford to lose him. Someday gonna be taken low too. Looper getting himself away. Echo Fox health bars are in dire straits. Yeah, but Echo Fox, they were able to push out mid-wave and don't have to worry about any pressure on their base just yet. And now, minute before Baron is back on the table, this will not be one that has an Elder Dragon in contention. Oh no! Simultaneously. What? And as the balloon deflates. This is super, uh, super tense though, because these two teams. This is the worst time for applause ever. Or is it the best time? Because you get to take a breath. No, it's reset. not the best time. It's 48 <laughs> minutes in and this game is 1,000 gold apart. Man, this is affecting me this much. Imagine how the players feel. It's like, no, this game could end any minute. And now it's none of them seem as upset as you. It's just because they're not on microphones. You can't hear how upset they are. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're on microphones with themselves, but we don't get to hear theirs. I have no idea what the issue is. Hopefully, it's something that can be resolved as quickly as possible. It's a bit so of an FPS issue. So, okay, Frogan's computer, they are just looking into it. And you definitely want your FPS to be the highest at this point in the game? Yeah. A potential game-ending team fight in a 50-minute <laughs> match had nine frames per second might be a little bit of an issue if you get oh, to that man. point in time. So, so what, what's the worst FPS issue you've ever had? Me, just personally? In general, with, like, computers. Oh, man. Well, back when I was in, like, my freshman year of college, I had this really potato laptop that would overheat so much that it actually hurt my hand to play on it for more than a couple of games. But sometimes you just got to get that ELO and grind it out anyway. And after you play, like, five or six games in a row, the FPS would just start dropping down to, like, four or seven oh my God. every now and again in a team fight. So you just play Microsoft PowerPoint 2012 League of Legends <laughs> play it and hope that it works anyway. That's why I play Skarner, because you can play him in a PowerPoint because you just match Q anyway. Ah. Yeah. Um, for myself, it was my parents really didn't believe in Microsoft. They believed in okay. Apple. So I had Apple computers. I had an Apple laptop. So you were doing it on the MacBook. Yeah, I had a MacBook. A MacBook. Mac a MacBook. Mac. Play <laughs> League of MacBook Legends too. on a map. <laughs> yeah, with Lord here's China. China and literally here's what? mid lane. Yeah. <laughs> so the MacBook uh, was so slow. I remember playing World of Warcraft uh, since it was one of the few games you could play on Macintosh. And it was the second boss of Blackwing Lair, and it was Veilstras, the one that gives everybody like infinite buffs, infinite energy. And so the fight would start, and I would hit forward, and I would be on the other side of the room the next time I got a frame. And Good I was time. against the wall. I actually got kicked from my number one guild because my FPS couldn't handle that fight. They were like, oh, sorry, Zyrene, your, your damage is a little low in this fight. I'm like, I can't even see. How am I supposed to hit top parses <laughs> when I can't see the game? I can't do anything. Because it's like, yeah. you actually have to have top DPS to that. As a rogue, you're just hitting your backstab button over and over because you have infinite, it's like rogue heaven, and I'm up against the wall in the corner. <laughs> so it's like you're, you're on the bottom of the damage chart, probably halfway below the healer. And yeah. It's like, what are you doing? I had to, like, supposed to be free. I had to like position myself before the fight started in a position I would never have to move from. So you just position yourself right by yeah. the boss's butt yep. and just backstab yep. in there the whole game. Yep. And if and the worst part was if I ever like was slightly out of backstab range, I hit W once and then I'm on the other side of the room. <laughs> I don't I don't know how. It was oh man. No, I actually awful. have one of my one of my best friends actually played League on a MacBook for the longest time, like all the way through college. And it was at first it was kind of troll because it took him like six minutes to load into every single game. But after a while, I kind of liked it because it just meant that, you know, I could forget to go get a snack or anything else. And then as I'm loading into the game, even if I'm sitting there for two minutes before I remember, I'm like, wait a second. I still need to go get a snack, but I can do it because he's at 12%. So you can just always take advantage of that. But then he upgraded his computer last year. So now every time I play with him, I'm always late. And I end up like two minutes behind on my jungle route because I went to take a break because I thought he would be loading for that long. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> And then you get stuck because he actually has a computer from the right century. And no toaster anymore. No toaster. I miss those days. Back in the kitchen. Now we have those reminders that it's like, you know, even though your character doesn't have to eat, remember, you do. And I'm oh. like, oh, thanks, five second. And I'm oh. like, oh, thanks, five second reminder. Yeah, I, oh, I love no. those. It's like, <laughs> you've been playing for longer than 20 minutes. Time for a break. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's 20 minutes. The, game. the worst was when you like pull a marathon. It's like, you've been playing for 16 hours. It's like, don't tell me, game. I know. <laughs> I know. Like, you think I don't know this? <laughs> It's like, I'm escaping. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just trying to do me right now. Come on. <laughs> First, my mom's on me. Now my game. Now the game itself. What are you, game? My dad? <laughs> You're not a real dad. <laughs> <laughs> my step game. Just saying. My <laughs> no, step no, no. game. Oh, man. <laughs> no, League of Legends is my main game. Yeah. League of Legends is the main squeeze, man. All my other games are my, my side games. 
Everybody seems to be back <laughs> in. So on that hustle. From what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of R's. Yeah, the R's means, in the chat. Means you're ready. The universal language of let's get this on. Yep. FPS seems to be Gucci. And now we back in. We are in, ladies and gentlemen. Time to see how this one actually ends. 87 to 89,000 gold. And a lot of times we talk, Zyrene, about how once you're past the 80,000 mark, it really doesn't mean that much anymore because you're full build anyway. So these teams, it's just going to come down to who does it right. Yep. Who does it right? What is your composition strength? Are you playing to it? Do you have the cooldowns at the time? Flash is up for almost everybody except Keith and Looper, which are two big ones. For Echo Fox, I would actually say some of the biggest. Looper is their main lockdown, and then Keith is actually the person that has been dying the fastest in these fights. You can see the gold difference versus time graph there at the bottom part of your screen. A lot of blue, but a little bit of red there at the end, showing that Dignitas has been in control. Yeah, but this is a game that's a few minutes. If Echo Fox review it, you look at that 23, 24 minute spike, that's the one where you're like, the game should have been over. Right, what this should happened? have been our game from this point on. The return of the FPS issue. <laughs> it strikes again. Damn you! All right, so back to the real conversation we were having about World of Warcraft Black. <laughs> <laughs> man, everything else. That stuff got me killed so much in Stranglethorn Vale, man. That was that was not fun. Dude, That's we still crazy. had, back when World of Warcraft first came out, we still had dial-up internet. The thing where you have to listen to the thing screech in your ear when you first log on with the wee wee or What? Oh, the, the, the dial noise, up? the, the dial-up dial noise. How could you forget <laughs> that? But yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's my Diablo 2 memory, man. That's, yeah, no, that's, that's what, my... that was my problem. It was so bad. I couldn't play anything online with it, so I just played the Warcraft 3 campaign a lot. I was like, man, <laughs> sure would be cool if I could play cool games with my cool friends, but I guess I'm going to play this game that's old instead. Man, that was, that was StarCraft where it's like, you, you log in, you're like, I'm going to play the main campaign. And I will admit that I never played the StarCraft 1 campaign all the way through without using cheats. Really? And I will say there are a lot of people Shit. out there who are like that. That campaign is not as, as easy on the higher difficulties as people like to say it is. I've never actually played StarCraft. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I work in esports, and I've never played StarCraft. Yeah. Oh. Have you watched it? Yeah. Okay. I have no idea how they manage all that stuff so fast. <laughs> like, I've watched the it's clips that are legitimately the cameras just on the guy's keyboard as he's going completely crazy 600 APM the whole time. And I'm like, studies have shown that if you are actually hitting buttons a lot like that, uh, and even if you have high APM and it's just gross APM where it's not effective APM, those are still actually typically better players. Like the stuff where you just bring the scoreboard up over and uh -huh. over again? You see when you watch people stream, sometimes they'll like hit the scoreboard all the time or they'll hit their F1 through 5 keys a whole bunch. Uh, that actually just keeps you warmed up, primed, and ready as long as it is uh, controlled action and not just you spazzing out on the keyboard. Because I could do that. Not just like mashing the button. Yeah, any of us could just mash all our buttons over again. We all started in bronze or silver five or 1200 yellow or whatever. Welcome to, welcome to, all, of, to all the fighting games I play. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, fighting games, like you watch real professionals play fighting games and they have these like frame perfect timings. I play fighting games by finding the most busted cheese combo and just hitting it over and over and over again. Dude, E-Honda turbo controller <laughs> with the palm. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Old school Sega. Anyway, back into the game. Looks like the FPS issued, issues had migrated to Dignitas. It was passed off to them, and then it got fixed. All right. Third time for Charm. We're back. Yep. And now, Baron setup. It's been what it's all about. Dignitas have a gigantic bottom wave shoving in. This may be enough to deal a lot of damage to that inhibitor if it's not taken care of, so Echo Fox may have to tend to that. But you'd have to send Looper to do so, and he's kind of your primary engage or body blocker. All right. Just like that. Tank's going to find each other. Parallel convergence thrown in. Nobody wanting to jump on it just yet. Keith and Acadian. Acadian going to be finding himself hit by the dredge line. Someday soaking in a lot of damage, though. Got to be careful. The builds are full. The damage is real. Looper and Someday both on the front line yet again. Acadian going to be wild growth. Chaser popping the edge of night. Popping the ult. Looking to fight right now. If he can, Gate going to be forced away. Keith, Keith. caught out. Having to get himself back further. Keen popping the Zonias. Looking to jump right back into the fight. There comes your Chrono Break. Keith is again hooked up. The damage comes through, but Keith persists. Dignitas trying to find Acadian. The Guardian Angel will be lost onto Keen. Keith still fighting, but finally goes down to law. He's the only casualty of the fight. All the summoner spells are being blown across the board here. They're trying to kill Acadian. They can't do it. They're like, all right, screw it. Get Keith. Get who you can. They get him. The GA goes down. And now it's still not even enough, really, to go for a Baron with confidence. As the red tide crashes into the bottom part of the Echo Fox base, so many minions piled up here. Good thing Looper's got that Titanic Hydra to clear them all out in time. The inhibitor will barely hang on. 
And that's the bottom lane inhibitor too. If that one goes down, that actually poses a real problem towards your Baron control. Yeah, and it's also the uh, the last turret that Echo Fox have on that uh, Nexus is that bottom one. So it's good to have that one up because the minions will just crash into it. They'll all group up on it. And now Chaser has started this up. Chaser and Something. Dignitas have decided to just go ahead and go for this and sack it. Echo Fox nowhere nearby, just deciding to give this one up. And Dignitas now Baron up. Have to see if that's enough for them to want to do something or if they're going to want to wait and see if they can grab Elder in two minutes as well. Waiting for Keith to come back up on Echo Fox's side. The Elder coming up in two minutes. Ooh, I feel like you use this to try and close the game, but they've been struggling to do so. Everybody in this game is full build except for Keith. Everybody uh, he, is maxed he, out on items. He either. sold his Guardian Angel because it was on cooldown mm -hmm. uh, and doesn't have, enough either, doesn't, doesn't have enough gold to swap it out for something else. So that's understandable. Okay. On the other hand, uh, Acadian has actually swapped to a Mortal Reminder here. Which, I'm trying to remember what items he had and which one he swapped out for that. That was the jungle item. Okay. Mm -hmm. So jungle item swapped away for the Mortal Reminder, trying to stop some of that healing. All these different champions that can have a lot of life steal or natural regeneration. 93 to 96,000 gold, 52 minutes in. What a hell of a start to this series, Zyrene. One of these teams is going to be feeling good with the win. The other likely going to be feeling at least somewhat exhausted after a 52-minute match that they ultimately will not be able to walk away with the victory in. And I'm watching these supports very carefully here because as the game gets tighter and tighter, it's who are they taking care of? Gate was putting speed bursts onto Acadian for almost that entire fight so that Acadian could walk up. Not Keith to reposition. It was Acadian to walk up, be a bit of a bruiser, and try to deal damage to Keen and also someday and Expecial is just providing so much extra utility to the team with the Ardent Sensor that he has, giving them some extra damage and healing. I gotta say, Laud has been performing pretty well this game. There's only two deaths to his name, mm -hmm. but the guy has very high kill participation, the highest right now, tied with his bottom laner. Someday thinking about going in if he can. Parallel Convergence gonna be thrown down. Keen threatens to jump forward, not gonna be finding that jump just yet. A lot of damage poured into the inhibitor. Not quite enough to take it down just yet, Ooh. though. Dignitas continues posturing forward. Dredge line will find no one. Lod grabs the inhib, and that's what Dignitas did for arrow. arrow onto Lod. No chance for Echo Fox to jump in on that one, though. He got himself back to the safety of the rest of the team. Dignitas well, finds Keen. the advantage in this, but now Keen in some trouble. Getting himself away from Acadian, who spins the ultimate to do that. Yeah, it looked like he missed a bit of that combo, and that may have been an extra 600 damage on top of it. Keen backs. He's right keeping. back into the fight. They know that Graves doesn't have the ultimate. They might be able to make something happen here. Froggen going to be hooked in. Someday looking to start the fight. Looper taking the damage. Spirit's Refuge to prevent a further engage. Redemption going to be used to heal Someday back up a little bit. Chaser. Someday now going to be looking to get back. Heal himself up. TP back into the fight. TP into the top side. Chaser's here too. Chaser making the move onto Acadian. Gets the stand united. That's a big shield that won't be available for a team fight. Acadian's ultimate almost back up now. So what they've done with the Baron is they've gotten those two inhibitors. They're going for that top turret. Even though Elder Dragon is on the table, they're just trying to pick apart the base. They have 30 seconds. Two more waves here. To work with. One turret left standing guarding this inhibitor. One more standing guarding the Nexus. Dignitas with all the tools and all the damage they need to crack it. But the Echo Fox team steadfastly preventing that approach. Dignitas, their Baron, only has a little bit of life left on it. Yeah, it won't be for when this turret is actually dealing damage to these minions, but it's about the time that those super minions are going to start pouring into the base. Hit Lod again. Lod getting himself caught out, but keeps himself alive with the QSS. Now Looper jumping into the fight. Acadian on the front line. Got to be careful about those Mystic shots. Expecial going to be forced to flash away. They he got is already dead! Fox is able to find one. Now going to be looking for two. Someday in retreat! Looper taunting forward, grabbing the lockdown onto that big tank. Can they kill him again, though? Someday trying to lumber his way out of there, but he cannot do it. Echo Fox with a two for zero. Froggen and Acadian just saved the game by diving in. Froggen was able to find a lot of damage there alongside the burst of the graves. Now they get to clean up their base, and now they have to think about how they approach this Elder Dragon at the same time. Elder Drake up, two inhibitors down. It's still a very rough situation for Fox because of the status of that base but they at least bought themselves a 60-second reprieve or so from the never-ending Dignitas push, Dignitas push efforts. Not being able to cast the Chrono Break, really not the dream situation for Keen. Not at all. Froggen got the key pick there. 
And there's a lot of shielding power. There's a lot of protecting power on the side of Dignitas between the locket, between Karma in general. But it just wasn't able to respond fast enough because Keen got destroyed instantly. Yeah. You can see, Special doesn't even have room now for wards. Neither does Gate. Looper's gonna try to get back, back in this. There's no inhibitor turrets, and no turrets on the Nexus. They're gonna go for Echo this. Echo Fox is looking to end this game, and Lon is down, ladies and gentlemen. Echo Fox with everything they need. A double kill onto Acadian. Chaser's gonna be chased down. They're gonna Keen do it. Finding the damage. Looper and Acadian are on to the Nexus, and Echo Fox will take game one. Screw the Elder Dragon. Go for the game. Forget about it, man. Go for the Nexus. Great call there from Echo Fox. Keen still off the table and dead from the previous pick. They clean up their base, and then they run it down mid. That was a way to end a game from Echo Fox. Defending for so long after having been in control of the game for so long before that, it changes, the momentum changes over to Dignitas. It seems like things are going really badly, but two key picks are all they need to say, look, this is where it ends. We're going to the base. I've spent 56 minutes in game one, and that's enough. And Echo Fox, though, they had control of it early on. They got an early lead. They got the first blood. Then they started snowballing from there, got themselves about a 3,000, 4,000 gold lead. Then they dropped the ball. Then the game slowed down. Then it was one Baron for Dig, one Baron for Fox, one Baron for Dig, and it goes back and forth. And then eventually it gets to the point where the pick is really what matters. You talked about it, execution. It's all about what you've purchased, not how many more items you have or what advantage it's what you what you've purchased what your execution is like and what your team comp is like and they got the pick and this this kind of approached the point the point of the game where keen is now with the team he's not flanking and that's when echo is strongest is when echo is getting those surprise flanks off mm -hmm. that's where that one fight that went the way of dignitas and not echo foxes at 23 minutes that's what really mattered is the flanks that came off and they took them by surprise Let's take a look one more time at that final fight.